Hello everyone. Welcome to your partner in education, Agile Rank Mint. Today, in this episode of Keem Crash Course, we're going to be looking at some sample questions of Keem which were asked in the subject of physics. So, we're going to be looking at how to solve these questions, but more importantly, how to interpret these questions so as to improve your skill in interpretation of questions when it comes to attempting the exam. So let's start off with our first question. The convex lenses of focal lengths 10 centimeters and 20 centimeters are kept in contact. The effective power of the lens system is 30 diopters, 15 diopters, 20 diopters, 12 diopters, 25 diopters. So how do we solve this question? Well, it says that we have two convex lenses, which are kept in contact. Now, let's name this one as the first lens and this one as the second lens. The first lens has a focal length equal to 10 centimeters, and the second lens has a focal length equal to 20 centimeters. We need to find the effective power of this system. Now when you have two or more lenses which are kept in a combination, we find out the total power or P effective as power of lens 1 added with power of lens 2. And if you have more lenses, you add their powers together. So, we know that the focal length of the first lens, f1, is 10 centimeters. And we also know that the focal length of f2 of the second lens is 20 centimeters. Now, since power of a lens is equal to 1 upon f, which is 1 upon focal length, the, the power of the first lens, p1, will be equal to 1 upon f1, which in this case is 1 upon the focal length in meters, which would be 0 0.1. Now, um, when we have the focal length in centimeters, in order to find the power, we can write it as 100 over the length in centimeters, which in this case is 10. So we get 10 diopters. As for the second lens, its power would be 1 upon f2, but since we have f2 in centimeters, we will use 100 instead. So it would be 1 upon 0 0.2 in meters, which would be 100 upon 20 in centimeters. So we get 5 diopters. So therefore p1 plus p2, that is p effective, would be equal to 10 plus 5, which is 15 diopters. So 15 diopters is the correct answer for the first question. And as you can see, the correct option is given by option B. Option B says it's 15 diopters. If you have selected A, that's incorrect because it's twice that. C, D, and E are incorrect because, again, the values are different. The reason why 15 is correct here is because we used... Um, the proper way of doing this, which is by finding each power, and then after finding each power, we add them together, in this case, to get the P effective here. Now remember, both of these are convex lenses, so therefore convex lens always has positive focus, positive focal length. And that's because when you have parallel right light rays hitting a convex lens, they meet each other at the focal point. If it was a concave lens, it would be the opposite because then the, the light rays would diverge, but then they would appear to be coming in from a negative focus or a negative focal length. So that's why in this case, um, the, the focal lengths are positive. Using those, we found out the power for both the lenses, and then we added the powers together to get 15 diopters. So option B is the correct option. Now let's look at another question. 
the emergent ray of light after refraction at a rectangular glass slab. A suffers deviation, B suffers no lateral displacement with respect to the incident ray, C emerges perpendicular to the incident ray, D emerges parallel to the incident ray, E emerges along the incident ray direction. So, how do we solve this question? Well, for that, we need to find out, we need to draw out a diagram of light, refraction of a light ray in a rectangular glass slab. For this video, we've provided one for you. So, as you can see, the incident ray hits the interface between air and glass along, the nor along normal 1. It suffers diffraction here, which is R. Then it moves through the glass and then it hits the parallel surface on the other side. Again, it suffers refraction since it's moving from glass to air. So therefore, it has a greater angle of emergence. So that's E here. And then it moves along the trajectory. Now, this would have been the trajectory had it been... Uh, so this would have been the trajectory if it was not present. If the glass slab wasn't present, this would have been the trajectory of it. And this is the trajectory of the light ray after because of the fact that there is a glass slab. Now, <clears throat> as you can see, in a glass slab, we have um, light going from air to glass and from gl glass to air. So therefore, the refractive index is similar. The reason being that if you go from air to glass, you suffer a refractive index n to 1. If you go uh, from glass to air, you suffer from the refractive index n 1 2. So because of that, the light suffers deviation. So the light goes closer to the normal here, and then it goes farther to the normal from there. And as you can see, due to this particular uh, refraction of light, there is a lateral displacement. So therefore, you can see that option B is incorrect. Emerges perpendicular to the incident ray. Now, if this is, was the incident ray, its perpendicular would be something like that. However, as you can see, the light ray isn't perpendicular, so option C is incorrect. Um, option E says emerges along the incident ray direction, but this here, the dotted line, is um, the supposed trajectory. It isn't the actual trajectory. The actual trajectory suffers lateral displacement, so E is incorrect. Suffers deviation. As you can see, there is no deviation. The, 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 the rays are parallel to each other, so A is incorrect. That means option D, emerges parallel to the incident ray, is the correct option. So light, when it enters the glass slab from air, suffers deviation. The, the, it travels through the glass until it reaches the parallel edge, refracts outwards as it moves through air again. And in a glass, in, and in, and in a rectangular glass slab, it's seen that angle I equals angle E. Angle of incidence is the same as angle of emergence because the thing is we're moving through the same two media again. If it were a different media below, say water, then this would have been completely different. So when you have two media that are the same, then the Snell's law works in tandem, so you can get n12 as 1 over n21. So using that, we can clearly see that angle I is equal to angle E, so therefore we have parallel rays with lateral displacement. So option D is the correct option. Now the final question for today. A device which is used to detect optical signals is a junction diode, light emitting diode, photovoltaic device, xenodiode, photodiode. Now this deals with semiconductors, so when you have a p-type semiconductor and an n-type semiconductor coming together, you get, a you get a diode, and you can use these diodes in various ways depending on whether you connect it from positive to negative or from negative to positive whether it's forward biased or reverse biased. So let's look at each of the functions here for each of these diodes. A is a junction diode. This is the standard diode which goes through the circuit and allows current to flow more easily in one direction than the other. 
So if you have a forward bias junction diode, then current flows more easily forward than reverse. If it was a reverse junction diode, then current flows more easily in the reverse direction. Now, option B is a light emitting diode, which we popularly call LEDs. These are forward bias diodes, and their primary function is to emit light. So they're primarily used as a light source. So we use LEDs to, you know, light up houses, cars, etc. So therefore, their function is to emit light, not to detect optical signals. So as you can see, options A and B are incorrect. What about option C, a photovoltaic device? Now, in a photovoltaic device, it converts light energy to electricity. And it does that by using the photoelectric effect. So in this particular scenario, light hits uh, the negative, light hits the, uh, light hits one of the junctions, like one of the semiconductors, it knocks out the electrons, and then when that happens, you can see that electricity is conducted. So we can convert light to energy, electricity by using photovoltaic devices. So again, option C is incorrect. What about option D, a xenodiode? A xenodiode is reverse biased and it is primarily used for voltage regulation and when you have voltage regulation in a circuit it helps in reliable flow of current since we have AC current we need to make sure that there is a regulation of voltage so therefore a xenodiode is used so again, its function is different. D is incorrect. The correct option here is option E, a photodiode. This is how a photodiode looks like. And as you can see, when light hits the diode, it makes it uh, enables the current to move in reverse bias, in forward bias instead of reverse. So therefore, it helps in detection of optical signals. So by measuring the changes, we can see that a photodiode helps in detecting optical signals. So therefore, option E is the right option. Now that concludes this episode of Keem Crash Course. We hope you found this episode interesting. For more of our useful and interesting content, don't forget to subscribe to Agile Rank Mate. If you've liked this video, you can please hit the like button and also share it with others. And if you want to get the latest updates from our channel, then please don't forget to hit the notifications icon, again, present below the video. So until the next episode, take care, stay safe, stay alert. Bye-bye for now.